What's going on guys? Josh here from Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. And today we are continuing our series in the monomyth, also known as the hero's journey, also known as the fool's journey. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go ahead and check out my other videos. I have a whole bunch right now to give you a basic overview and kind of catch you up to where we are right now. But today, the main thing we're talking about is the first step in the initiation phase of the monomyth. And before we go too far, we need to just review very quickly where we left off in the first phase, which was separation. And if you recall, the final steps of separation, you have the hero going from their normal world, they've been called to adventure, and they cross the threshold by facing threshold guardians. And once they face those threshold guardians, they're going to enter the belly of the whale. And that is their first taste of death. Their first idea of what is to come in the special world. And the stakes are raised. So they understand that this is no walk in the park. This is going to take, it's going to require some work. After that, they enter after the belly of the whale, they enter the, the road of trials. They enter the initiation phase full-fledged. And that is the point of no return. Once you're there, you can't go back. You are fully committed to this journey, no matter what may happen. And so, for example, when... Frodo and the and the fellowship in Lord of the Rings go through the the mines of Moria and the Balrog takes Gandalf out. That is Frodo and the, the Fellowship's first true taste of death. And they're they can't turn back, they can't go back through the mines. The way is now shut. And they now have to press forward on their journey to get the ring back into Mount Doom. For Star Wars, that the belly of the whale is when the belly of the whale and the road of trials are almost mixed. And you'll see this. Even though there's there's a a, a, there is a seeming sequence of events. You'll see, especially in Hollywood movies, these sequences are sometimes combined, condensed, or moved around. And one of the main ones that can be moved around in the road of trial, in the road of trials, is the belly of the whale, because it is a trial in and of itself, and it's sort of the first trial. So in Star Wars, it's when Luke gets pulled under by, <coughs> pardon me, by the, the, the creature in the trash compactor. And for a moment there, the audience gets their first taste of death, and they think that the hero might be dead. But the Road of Trials for Star Wars actually starts after they leave the cantina, they escape through the Millennium Falcon while being chased. That and then they then right after that they enter into this seemingly they they're looking for Alderaan but they end up in a asteroid what seems to be an asteroid field and then they come across the Death Star which they don't know at the time they think it's a small moon that is the beginning of the Road of Trials and what the Road of Trials is it is not one step. And I think of all of the other things that Joseph Campbell described, this is the one piece where I would say that the initiation phase is almost entirely the road of trials. In Chris Vogler's book, The Writer's Journey, he calls it test trials and allies because there's so many things that happen in this phase. You, you, go, you, you are tested. There's a lot of trials that you have to go through, and you meet a lot of new friends along the way. If you were to imagine a burger where you have 
a bun, and then the meat of the burger, and then another bun. That's what the road of trials is. The road of trials is the meat of the burger. It's going to take up the majority of your story, your film, your play, your song, your poem, your novel, your short story. That's going to be where the meat of the story is. And the, it all revolves around the hero learning lessons that are going to allow him to bring, bring back the power to the normal world in the, in the final phase of the return and for him to defeat whatever, you know, final foe, villain that is, that comes around. And the way you should look at it is every obstacle and every foe that you put along this road, right? They should kind of, the stakes should increase a little bit each time. And it should, it should start, think about it like school. In school, you didn't start with the hardest subject first or the hardest part of quantum physics first, right? What they do is they, every book on any kind of academic subject, the first thing they do is they start you off with the basics, the fundamentals. What, how, because they need to explain to you the building blocks of how you get from point A to point B. You can't understand a very difficult concept if you don't understand the fundamentals. The road of trial should be the same way. You should face a small enemy and then a, a, a medium-sized enemy and then a larger enemy and then a big enemy and then the, finally this gigantic pro prodigious dragon, right? It should be increasing. And each time it's a test. Each one of those foes or challenges is a lesson. It's a, it's a teacher for the protagonist, for the hero. The other thing to keep in mind is that the hero shouldn't always do the right thing, the right thing. The hero should be constantly challenged to learn the right thing, but along the way they can fail. And a lot of times this is the best way to do it so that you can show different perspectives. And what I mean is this, when when you give, when you write an essay, what you want to do is you want to state your, state the problem, give your thesis, your, 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 your thesis statement, like what you believe to be the truth, the heart of the matter, and then pro, pro, provide supporting arguments throughout the meat of your essay, and then you can, then you do a conclusion. A story follows a very similar format. The road of trials is the supporting arguments for your theme. If your theme is that instead of fighting or running, you should just stand still in the face of danger, then that should be what you present in the road of trials. You should show obstacle after obstacle or foe after foe and maybe the first time the hero decides he wants to run, but <laughs> his, the, the villain or their rival decides they want to attack. But the mentor decides that they're going to stand still in the face of danger and allow the opponents to fight each other while they stay in complete serenity. I'm just making this up as I go, but the, the example is your you're proposing three different points of view on how to attack the same problem. And you can do it from different characters, different angles. Sometimes your good guys can succeed. Sometimes they can fail. But whether they succeed or fail, the point is that they learn the lesson and they carry it with them further down the road. So that as they go to the harder lessons, the more complex ones, they can build on that knowledge. For example, 
Obi-Wan watching both Obi-Wan watching his mentor die at the hands of Darth Vader, Obi or not Obi-Wan. Luke Skywalker watching Obi-Wan die at the hands of Darth Vader or Frodo watching the Balrog take Gandalf down into the into the never-ending pit of Moria. Those are both examples where the hero gets a glimpse not only at the stakes but at how to face a problem, whether it's the right way or the wrong way, they learn something there. They may even perceive that as a failure, but later on find out that it was not a failure. For example, Obi-Wan died, and at the time, Luke may consider that a bad thing. But later on, he comes back stronger in the Force and untouchable by, the, by Vader and the dark side. So some would say that that was a success in some ways. That's, that's the point. You want to show different, different characters representing different points of view so that you can support your argument. And then in the end of the story, your theme seems well-constructed. It doesn't feel one-sided. It doesn't seem self-indulgent. It feels full. The final thing that I'll say is... If you're treating each one of these opponents in succession as tests, then that final test, which is normally considered to be the dragon battle, and I'll talk about that in another video, that should be what you would consider the final exam. All of these previous obstacles were pop quizzes throughout the weeks leading up to the, not the final exam, sorry, the midterm, the midterm. And as Chris Vogler says, it's not the crisis, it's the, what does he call it? It is, oh, I'll have to come back to it. But the point is, it's not the ultimate challenge. It is the test that prepares you for everything that you've learned along the journey thus far. That's the final test in the initiation phase. So if, if, say, you were a tribesman, like we talked about in an earlier video, and in order to hunt, you had to learn how to make a bow, string a bow, make an arrow, and then fire it at your target, then the final test would be to set you out in the wilderness with no other friends and you have to do all those things in order to hunt and find and, and, and kill your prey, a, a rabbit or, or a deer. That would be the, the midterm exam. The, the difference between the midterm exam and the final exam, which you're going to see in the final phase, is that in the final phase, it's not just about you. It's not just can the hero take care of themselves with this new power in the special world, but can the hero teach this new power or give this new power to the people in the ordinary world so that they too can benefit from it? And that's where the final exam is in the sense like now you have mastered this information. So I hope that this all makes sense. It's about, we're at 14 minutes, so that's a pretty good time to, to call it stops. If you guys have any questions, if I didn't go into enough detail, if I went into too much, go ahead and leave me a comment below, ask your questions, and I'll try to address them. I'd love to start a conversation about this because there's so much that can get missed. There's so much information. And when you're writing, it's really good to pick the minds of other people to get an idea of how they would approach certain situations. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. And if you like it, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, take it easy.